Welcome to the Azad Asset Management webinar on calculating zakah on modern financial assets. While there is much to learn about zakah, the obligatory charity owed by Muslims, this webinar will provide a brief overview of who should pay zakah, what property it is owed on, and how to calculate it on certain assets. This webinar will cover information based on generally accepted Islamic principles following standards published by AOFI, the Accounting and Auditing Organization for Islamic Financial Institutions, and it is not intended to be comprehensive in all schools of thought. This webinar is intended to be a brief overview explaining the general principles of zakah calculation. More information is available by contacting Azad Asset Management at 1-888-86-AZ. -E Z A D. First, let's understand what is zakah. Zakah is a financial obligation that every Muslim must pay on certain assets that are at or above a certain amount, called a nisab, and have completed a holding period of 12 lunar months, called a haul. While giving charity is a financial transaction, it is an integral part of a Muslim's spiritual health and specific care should be given in making sure it is dealt with correctly. Zakah is an opportunity to bless one's wealth by giving it away to those in need. Ibn Tayyimah said, the soul of one who gives zakah is blessed, and so is his wealth. Zakah is a must on every Muslim, irrespective of gender, age, or mental status, who owns a certain number of assets that have reached a minimum amount been held for at least 12 lunar months, and meet other conditions. However, if certain conditions, which I will discuss next, are not met, then it does not remain compulsory. So what are the conditions that must be met before zakah becomes obligatory? First, the total amount of wealth owned by an individual must meet a minimum threshold, called the nisab. While prophetic hadith described the threshold, or nisab, for different assets such as gold, silver, and livestock, the question is, what nisab is relevant on our modern financial assets? The nisab can be determined based on the nisab of silver or gold. This is equal to the current market value of 85 grams of gold or 595 grams of silver. According to the Hanafi and Maliki juristic schools, the nisab is calculated at the beginning and end of the year, and changes in between are overlooked. Any increase of property after reaching the nisab during the year is to be included in the total sum counted for zakah. This is considered the easiest and most applicable among the other juristic views, which has made the majority of scholars adopt it. So what happens when the wealth reaches the minimum amount, or nisab? The next condition is that these assets should be held for a full lunar year, starting from the day it reaches the nisab. This time period is called the haul. The third condition that must be met is that assets must be completely owned by a particular person. Assets owned by a non-profit organization or government are not zakatable. Zakat is liable on the assets that are completely owned and vested for the owners. For example, IRA accounts are owned by individuals and can be accessed despite payments of penalty or tax when distributed. This does not preclude the account from being zakatable, but the zakatable amount is that which would remain after applicable taxes and penalties. On the contrary, a current employee cannot withdraw from a 401k account if they are currently employed and below the distribution age. This would preclude the account from being zakatable until the time when they are allowed to withdraw. The fourth condition is that assets must have some real or assumed growth. Finally, there should be no other reason an asset is not zakatable, such as insolvency. Once it is determined whether zakat is applicable to an individual's wealth, there are certain assets on which zakat is not owed. Here, assets that are considered to be capital goods, such as tools and factories, are not zakatable themselves. However, the income that is derived from them is zakatable upon meeting the conditions discussed earlier. Furthermore, personal use property is not zakatable. This includes one's personal residence, vehicles, clothes, and other personal belongings. Only halal and lawful assets are liable for zakat. 
No zakah is required on haram or unlawful assets, such as liquor, pork, gambling, interest, stolen money, bribery, or any other impure money. Such assets or money must be returned to its lawful owners, and if the donor cannot be identified, then the assets must be donated to charity through purification. Purification is not a form of zakah or sadaqah, and is in only intended to rid oneself from impure money that one never intended to benefit from. In modern financial times, this includes securities or stocks that are deemed not to be halal according to sharia. uses halal investment guidelines established by IOFI and adopted by the Azad Sharia Advisory Board. Finally, assets intended for retained ownership and for the purpose of deriving income are not zakatable. This means that investment property and income-oriented stocks do not owe zakah based on their current market value. In this instance, income derived from them is zakatable, just as what is done with capital goods. For example, zakah is not paid on the market value of a rental property. However, income that is derived as rent and held for the whole period is zakatable. In calculating zakah, we start with the zakah base, which equals all zakatable assets minus liabilities or debts that are payable by the Howell date. Zakah is not obligatory on wages, salaries, and income at the time of receiving such income. Zakah is assessed based on conditions we discussed earlier and must meet the ownership and Howell period requirements. With regards to zakatable assets, those include gold and silver, cash, cash equivalents, assets intended for trade or sale, good current debt, livestock, crops, and minerals. All cash, gold, and silver are liable for zakah at 2.5%, based on their values on the day of the Howell. If the Howell is linked to the solar year, zakah is 2.577% instead of 2.5%, so as to make up for the difference between the two calendars. In the rest of this presentation, we will go over calculating zakah on modern financial assets, most notably on debt and stocks, which are assets intended for trade or sale. If you make a loan, you owe zakah on any amount repaid as of the Howell date if it's in good standing. If the loan is past due and in bad standing, no zakah is owed until the owner recovers the debt and the zakah is paid once for all past years it was in bad standing. If you have taken a loan and owe debt, the amount due before the Howell date is deductible from one zakah base. However, debt payments that are due after the Howell date are not deductible from the zakah base. For example, a person may deduct their current home mortgage payment from their zakah base, but not the entire loan amount. The interest portion of any debt acquired in non-halal way should not be deducted from the zakah base. However, one can deduct debt that is a result of acquiring commercial assets from the zakah base. This relates to modern financial assets, since bonds are also a form of debt. Interest-based debt securities, such as bonds, banking notes, CDs, commercial papers, money markets, and others that are liquid are liable for zakah only on the principal amount or market value, whichever is lower. However, any gain due to interest accrued or market appreciation is not recognized as lawful and is not eligible for zakah. Such gain should be considered unlawful and purified by donating to charity. Let's briefly discuss different kinds of accounts that can hold stocks before we discuss how to calculate zakah on growth stocks and income stocks. For these accounts, we should refer to the conditions of zakah to see whether the owner has complete ownership. Owners have full ownership in accounts like IRAs and education savings accounts, but may have to pay taxes or penalties when withdrawing. For accounts with full ownership, zakah is owed on the amount owned after taxes and penalties. This applies to 401ks whose assets can be accessed and redeemed at the time of the Howell date. However, accounts that do not have full ownership, like current participant 401k accounts, there is no zakah due since ownership is not complete. Now that we have gone through an overview of who is liable for zakah and what assets are owed on zakah, let's talk a little bit about the calculation of zakah on common stocks.
We'll use common stocks as an example since we often get a lot of questions about them. Of course, our clients at Azad know that we calculate zakat for them on an annual basis and send a statement showing the total amount to be purified and paid from their portfolios. This calculation can be used for shares of publicly traded companies that you may acquire. For the purpose of this explanation, we'll assume that the stocks held follow halal investment guidelines, since zakat is not owed on shares of stocks that are not halal. There are two basic intentions for purchasing a stock, either for the growth and appreciation of the stock or for the income or dividends it can provide. With this distinction, let's take a look at how we can calculate zakat on a portfolio of stocks. While a shareholder may reap the benefit of both growth and income from a particular holding, the original intention of why it was purchased is the key. Unlike taxes, we don't have the IRS looking over our shoulder. However, since zakat is done between oneself and God, one's intention determines which calculation to use. The zakat of a portfolio of stocks will be done by adding the zakat owed on income stocks with the zakat owed on growth stocks. So why differentiate between them? In the next slides, we'll discuss how zakat is assessed differently on each. Stocks held for the purpose of growth and appreciation are like assets that are held for the purpose of trading and are considered commercial goods, or in Arabic called arud tijara. Arud is the plural of the word ard, which is any wealth other than money. For these shares, their zakah base will be based on the total closing market value of shares owned, or net asset value, on the howl date. The net asset value is then multiplied by 2.5%. Stocks held for the purpose of deriving an income or for benefiting from dividends are considered capital goods. The zakah is not paid on the net asset value, but on the income that is derived from it. However, it is typically difficult to track this unless data is available. Therefore, the zakah base of each share of such a company can be estimated by reducing total current assets by total current liabilities and then dividing the net by the total number of outstanding shares. The zakat base will be any amount in excess of zero. More accurate methods should be utilized if available data allows. So there you have a brief overview of how to calculate zakat on growth and income stocks, two investments commonly held by the American Muslim investor. That brings us to the conclusion of today's presentation. Remember that Azad Asset Management is here to help you with any questions you might have. If you or your community would like a more in-depth understanding of zakat calculation, consider having an Azad Investment Advisor speak to your group. Please contact us. Thank you and assalamu alaikum.